My name is Barb Stein, and I am the representative for Programming for Trail of Johnson County, which is an organization that helps seniors stay in their homes as long as possible. And it's not a medical organization. Michelle Buman, who is recording and being right there, is the programming director for the Senior Center. So sometimes we love to do things together uh, because we get a bigger crowd and because uh, we just think it's the same population. We have some carryover and it's important to have that bridge together. And our office is in the senior center. So um, that kind of makes another combination. I wanted to, before, as I introduced Lindsay, I wanna tell you the funny connection. There was a fabulous article in the Press Citizen uh, that I do have here with photographs and very, very long. And it was on July 19th. And um, it said, meet Iowa City's talking dog, Dewey, part of a global science project. So I read the article and went to my coffee group, half of which is here right now. And I said, boy, I read the best article this morning. It was so interesting. I just thought, I thought a lot of people would really like to know about this. And Chris Kalerik, who's up there too, next to Lindsay on my screen, who is uh, also a teacher at the University of Iowa Library School said, well, I work with her all the time. She's wonderful. And I said, would you get me an introduction? <laughs> so Chris did the groundwork and Lindsay said, yeah, she wouldn't mind doing a presentation for us. And uh, she is in the School of Library Science at University of Iowa, also research oriented. And so she knows data and science and uh, information but she also knows her dog. And uh, we're gonna hear all about that today, about a research project going on in the United States uh, with uh, really dog owners and pet, other pets too, rabbits and birds and I don't know what mm -hmm. else, but uh, people trying to learn uh, if there is better communication that could happen between animals and humans. What, what's really going on there? Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so excited. Um, this is, as you can imagine, something that I don't, I don't mind talking about. Um, so I, uh, I'm really excited to talk with, with everybody who's, who's interested in, in, in pets. I know how, how much folks love their pets. So, um, this has been such an exciting project to be a part of just for, for that reason. Um, so, uh, I guess I can start with how we how we got started. Um, I don't know how many of you have um, have seen Bunny uh, the Sheep -a Doodle on online. I think she's been getting national headlines as um, one of the most prolific dogs um, in in the research study at at this point. Um, but uh, there's also Christina Hunger, uh, who's a speech pathologist, who really got this all started. Um, she has a, uh, a book that she just wrote about her experience um, called How, How Stella Learned to Talk. So she started with um, her dog. Um, this, is, this is something that she does with, with children. She works with um, nonverbal children uh, using augmentative um, uh, com uh, alternative communication devices, AAC. Um, so they are these tools, um, including these sort of keyboards um, or, um, or tablet computers that are programmed with buttons for specific words that then um, nonverbal humans can use to communicate, to learn to communicate with others. So she had been doing this work with, um, with children as part of her job and part of her research. Um, and the story that she tells is that uh, she was watching a friend's dog and this dog had been trained to use bells to to signal when they wanted to go outside and she realized how um how many nonverbal cues along with this ringing of the bells that the dog was using to to let her know what it needed um, as they were as it was navigating this new this new space so when she ended up adopting a puppy of her own she thought well i i wonder if i could take something that i could record words into and, and teach a dog to start to use human language in the same way that, that I work with these, these children. 
Um, so she ended up finding um, these answer buzzers uh, that, that are widely available. They're, they're meant for classroom use so that kids can kind of play quiz shows and trivia, but you can program whatever sound you want into these buzzers. And when you tap the buzzer, it says the, the word or makes the sound. So she started modifying these and working with her dog, Stella. And Stella started using these, these words. Um, so uh, Bunny uh, started doing the same thing. Um, her own, her, her human, uh, uh, Alexis is an artist and, and thought she would kind of follow suit. Um, and while all of this was happening, this started catching the, um, the ear of, uh, the research teams at the animal cognition lab at USC. And, uh, one of the folks who is working on a PhD there, um, realized that there were some flaws with the technology and started developing different buttons for, animals to use that were a little easier to press, that the clarity of the sound would be a little bit better. So actually building a tool that would be meant just for teaching um, in, at the start dogs um, to do this. Um, and they started a global, a global research study. So this was all happening um, about two years ago. Um, and last November, I tripped across these videos of Bunny and a couple of other dogs online, pushing these buttons and communicating with the humans that they lived with. And I started to think, you know, we trained Dewey to ring bells to go out when he, when he was a puppy. And I talked to him all the time and I know he knows, he knows words. And I know he knows, you know, when we say we're going to go for a walk, he knows what that word is. He gets excited thought we could probably teach him to, to say a few things. Um, so I looked up this company, it's called Fluent Pet and they have uh, kits and I can show you, let me pull up a, a picture here of, of, of Dewey's very first button. Um, so the way that these work is that the just recordable buttons and they come with a set of stickers and you decide what word you want to put on the, the button and you record it. And then you can put your sticker on so that you know what that, what that button correlates to. And then there are these hex tiles that snap together like play mats that, that you may have seen um, that you can put the button in uh, and each tile has space for six, six buttons so that you can expand um, your vocabulary as you, as you, as you go. Um, and the patterns on them are supposed to help the animals recognize, um, where the, uh, the help with that spatial location of where the buttons are on the board. So we bought a pack of six buttons and I thought that was a pretty ambitious effort that I would work on six buttons with Dewey. They recommend you start with outside because it's a, it's a word many, many dogs are familiar with. Um, and often need to ask for, um, and that you have multiple opportunities throughout the day to, um, to model that. So the, the key to this is that every time I say the word outside, I hit the button. When we're going to go outside, I hit the button. Um, so I'm constantly showing Dewey that this is, this is, this is how this button works. And this is what this button means, um, in doing it myself. So um, we started with outside uh, and he seemed real curious about the button the first day. And then he, he didn't want to look at it um, after, after that. So we added a, um, a few additional words. Uh, we added play and um, walk so that we had a way of demonstrating to him that the different buttons meant different things. And we had more opportunities to use the buttons um, during the day. Um, so uh, about two weeks into this, he wasn't looking at the buttons. He wouldn't touch the buttons. He wouldn't come near the buttons. And I was about to give up. I thought this is something he's just not interested in. I wasn't frustrated. I wasn't, you know, I thought, well, this was a grand experiment. It was kind of fun. And then one evening I was on a Zoom call and all of a sudden I heard outside. And he was over at his, at his buttons and he looking at me going, okay, are we, 
are we going to go? And I said, yeah, we can, we can go outside. You need to give me a minute. And, uh, so I was trying to finish up my zoom conversation and I hear walk and I thought, oh goodness. Okay. So, so now you're using all of them. And then suddenly he was saying play. So he's using all the buttons on the board all at once, knowing that they're going to get my attention. Um, and, and the, the, the rest has been history at this point. We are now up to, um, I can show you his, his current soundboard. So we, we started with that one button. Um, we, we grew, we grew slowly. Um, share this one here. Uh, so here's, here's with four, with four buttons, we kept putting the, the tiles together. Um, and adding new words. Um, Dewey is very funny in that he um, won't seem to use a new word until he's pretty sure what it means. Um, dinner was one that he used almost immediately. Um, he watched me record the button. We waited for dinner time one night. Um, uh, he watched me record the button and got all excited. And the minute I put it down on the floor, he started pressing it. Um, so he, that was a word he was really familiar with. Um, the research team doesn't provide a lot of guidance because they're trying to, they don't know what the best way to teach folks, to teach animals to do this is yet. So they're trying to, part of this first phase of the research is to watch all of these different animals doing this and all of these humans working together um, but so they don't want to influence any ideas too much. But one thing they do suggest is that you don't start with a food related button because otherwise it just becomes a, a mechanism for getting treats. So we waited until Dewey clearly knew what outside and walk and play meant and that the different buttons meant different things before we introduced a food word, especially since he's really food motivated. Um, if you read the article, um, you, you know that his favorite word is broccoli. Um, that is his favorite treat. He eats it frozen. He eats it fresh. Um, uh, it, it was highlighted in the article. It is the most used and abused looking button on our, our soundboard at the moment. The, the sticker is a little crusty and, uh, and the writing's starting to wear off. Um, so, uh, you know, he, they do have the ability to, to over abuse the food words, um, but, but he uses, he uses a range of, of other, of other words as well. Um, so currently our soundboard, um, looks like this. Um, so we have, uh, 68 buttons on the soundboard that range from very concrete things like dinner and broccoli, um, names for his toys. Um, he has a button for himself and for his little brother uh, who joined the family in um, January. Uh, uh, words for, for my, my partner and I, um, things like walk, uh, which are a little bit more abstract. They still have kind of concrete things that we go to the door and we, um, you know, grab his leash and, and there's a whole, um, there's a whole method there, but recently we added words for car, uh, and then different places that we walk. So he has a word for the woods, for field, uh, when we go out to the prairie, um, for playground, which is one of his favorite places to go. He likes to hop all over the playground equipment. Um, so he will request to go in the car to go to the field. <laughs> um, sometimes we have conversations about how we're going to do a neighborhood walk and not go in the car, but he'd rather go to the field. Um, so there's some negotiation happening. Um, we're also working on words for feelings and um, emotions, which are a little harder. He's more of a stoic guy. He doesn't express himself, um, his emotions very much. So those have been Harder words to teach, but but words we're working on. Um, so um, we've 
we've been reporting, we're working closely with the research team now as part of a small group of, of um, uh, uh, we're, we're called the pilots group. So we, you know, we tend to help test innovations to the technology. Um, right now we're working on helping to test and develop uh, a web app um, to accompany the buttons. So um, one of the really, amazing things about this is I, I have this incredible relationship with Dewey. Um, we've always had an incredible relationship. He's, he's six years old, if I didn't mention that. Um, so we've been working with the buttons for about a year. Um, and as a, as, a, as a researcher and um, a library science uh, professor, I'm very interested in data. So um, there were mechanisms for reporting back to the research team. They, they've got the small group that they work with, but they're also have, they also have a, a web community um, where people share their experiences teaching their animals. Um, and as Barb mentioned, there's dogs mostly, but cats. Um, there's a, a pea hen uh, and a few other birds. Um, the cats just blow my mind. I, I can't, there, there are cats that are, that are have almost as many buttons as Dewey has. Um, there's a horse uh, in the in the study as well. Um, so there's a there's an online place where we all talk with one another and share our stories. Um, but there was no systematic way to share what buttons our learners were using, um, how frequently they were using them with the research team. And I started to think, well, there's some just basic tools that we could use like Google Forms um, and Google Sheets. Um, and they have um, an incredible tool called Data Studio that will visualize these things in, in charts and, and graphs. Um, and so I just made a simple template so that I could, I could pull up a Google Form and say, okay, Dewey just said, let's go for a neighborhood walk. So I can put those things into a spreadsheet and I could know how many buttons he was pushing in a day and which buttons he was using most frequently. And um, uh, so I can, I, can, I can show you our, um, our dashboard here. Uh, and other people started to get interest, interested in, um, in doing the same thing with their learners. Um, so here's our, our information for today. All he has said so far is broccoli. <laughs> um, and the time of day says it, uh, whether he pushes one button at a time or whether he'll push two or three. Um, uh, what he's doing, whether he's making a request or sometimes he just talks about what he's doing. Um, sometimes he asks, uh, sometimes he shares his, his feelings. Um, we can kind of see his, his average here. So on average, he hits about 13 buttons a day right now. Um, that's actually kind of low compared to, uh, to earlier in the, in the year. Um, I've also got tools here, um, to track, um, which buttons he uses most, most frequently. Um, so this one's kind of fun to look at too. It'll take a second to load. Um, but this has been since we since we started. Um, so broccoli, um, broccoli's the most frequently used word uh, uh, over 854 times in the last year. Um, but he also um, likes to ask for scratches or scratches for pets. Talks about his ball. He likes to talk about where he is uh, upstairs and downstairs. Um, uh, there was a lot of talk about poop when we brought Dusty home and we're trying to house train him. Um, so we can see here, um, he's had a couple of dips in his, in his learning, but um, on average, he'll, he'll use about 30 different words over the course of a month, 30 or 40 different words over the course of a month. Um, so we're trying to keep track of all of that. So um, in, in generating this, this template, um, I, I built out some videos and some tutorials for the other learners so that they could do the same thing and report their data back to the research team, um, which is how I ended up getting involved with the, with the research team. 
Um, so they've now just built a web app that they've released in the last week um, that does all this um, and reports directly to them so that they can have all of this data. Um, they now have learners on every continent. Um, they have at least one learner uh, reporting their data in every state in the United States. Um, and um, I think there's over, over 2,000 different learners that are actively reporting their button use on a, on a weekly basis. So the, the research team has this incredible opportunity to learn not just from one animal. We think about some of the gorillas that have been out there. There have been some cases of dogs that they've, that they've worked with um, that are these single animals that they've had an opportunity to observe. Um, and now with all of these folks reporting their data and talking about their experiences, um, they can now have this ability to study um, at, a much, at a much different level um, and draw conclusions about not only animal cognition, but they're hoping human cognition as, as well from what they've learned. Um, so that's, that's kind of my <laughs> lengthy, lengthy intro um, uh, to provide some context um, for, for what, for what we're doing. Um, I guess I could also, let me pull up, we've got an Instagram account. Um, I can pull up, uh, a, a, a video here. Um, let me make sure the sound is on so you can kind of see him in action. Um, Um, so this is just a little video that I pulled together that is a compilation of him using the broccoli button in different contexts over a couple of different days. Um, but so you can kind of see how this works. He pushes the buttons with his nose. Um, there's a variety of different mechanics that different dogs are expressing. Some use a paw, um, but Dewey tends to, to even his squeaker toys, he pushes with his nose. So we kind of suspected this is how he would interact with the buttons. So, um, so we have a camera on him um, so that we can share video with the research team, but also sometimes he just talks when we're not in the room. Um, and we have a small house, but we don't always hear him. So, um, so it helps us too to know uh, when, when he's talking. Um, so this is real short, I'll play this for you. So that's Dewey in action with some of his favorite combinations. Um, interestingly, uh, so they, they talk about the difference between things that you model and things that the learners create on their own. So in this case, um, I only ever model broccoli by itself. So when I use broccoli, I hit the broccoli button. Now we're working on want. So when he asks for broccoli, I'll hit want broccoli to try and get him to use those two words in combination. Um, things like neighborhood walk are things I model when we're gonna go just walk around our neighborhood as opposed to going into the car. Um, there are many word combinations that Dewey has invented all on his own. So all of those were, were novel word combinations that he's put together. So home broccoli, um, he, he just really likes the home button, which I think is so endearing. Um, broccoli upstairs, I think, right? There's a lot of speculation that goes into trying to decide what he's actually trying to say refers to broccoli out of the fridge in the, the kitchen, which is on the first floor of our ranch, which is upstairs. Um, we have a family room downstairs um, where we keep his whimsies treats. Uh, they're, they're dental treats uh, that just happen to be flavored with vegetables. So broccoli downstairs, I think is asking for his dental treat from the family room. Um, before he had a downstairs button, he would sneakily use the outside button because that's how we go out to the backyard is through the basement. He would use the outside button to get me downstairs to the cookie jar um, that is in the family room. 
um, to ask for the same thing. So his language evolved as he had more words. Um, he often gets veggies with dinner. So I think broccoli dinner is the combination of the other vegetables that he's eating with, with dinner. Um, the other word that he tends to combine with things is scritches. Um, so I've only ever modeled scritches on its own. Um, or like mama scratches if I'm giving him scratches or ear scratches if he wants his ears scratched. Um, but he started using scratches as a modifier for anything that involved touch. So scratches play, he would use after he and Dusty were wrestling. Um, scratches walk seems to refer to an, out, uh, an off leash walk. Uh, I don't know if that's because we tend to like grab at him to chase him or if it's because he'll walk through the tall grass and that touches him as he's as he's going. Um, the most interesting combination we had was Scritch's drink. So he doesn't have a water button. He has a drink button um, because that's uh, that's that's the word we've always used. You need a drink. Um, but when he played outside in the sprinkler this summer, he would come in and say Scritch's drink or ask to go outside to play in the Scritch's drink. Um, oh yeah, Chris, yes. So, <laughs> so the buttons have traveled with us. Um, we're originally from Pennsylvania and we drive home because we, we now have two large dogs, uh, uh, Dusty, Dewey's an 80 pound golden doodle. Uh, Dusty is now topping it off at close to 60 pounds. Um, we often take a lot of bikes home with us as well. So we drive a couple times a year from, from Iowa city to near Pittsburgh, um, and the last trip we took, because we were there for an extended amount of time, we took the buttons with us, um, which is really interesting. They now have a traveling case that is built. Um, but even when you hit bumps in the car, we tended to hear scratches, walk, play, <laughs> we'd hit bumps in the road. Um, and I wasn't quite sure what would happen. Uh, he had never used the buttons outside of the house. We've moved them around the house a bit. Uh, when we were remodeling this past winter and he always found his way, uh, which I find amazing because I can only orient myself one way to the board and remember where the buttons are, but he uses the from all different directions. So I thought we'd take them with us. And um, as I was pulling the buttons out of their carrying case and setting them up, he started talking. He was so excited, I think, to have his buttons. We were in a new place. And the house we were staying in is oriented completely differently. So they have a, the first floor, the downstairs is the kitchen, living room, dining room, all of the things that are the upstairs in our house. Um, and the upstairs is the bedroom. Um, so, uh, so differently oriented, different layout, different place. And the most frequent words that he used when we were there in that new place were upstairs and downstairs um, and kind of it, it was interesting those first couple of days kind of reorienting himself to the to the place um, so I went upstairs and there's there's Dewey at a soundboard going upstairs um, uh, we were downstairs uh, uh, so he would he would talk about that quite a bit um, uh, he also uh, used his mail button for the first time. We have a, a, a mail button because they tend to get really excited when the mail comes. Um, Dusty's a barker, Dewey isn't. Um, so I added mail thinking like maybe that would help him to, to talk about when the mailman was, what mail person, the mail carrier was here. Um, but I also use it when I carry boxes into the house. So he used his mail button to talk about us bringing our luggage into the house. I think again, like, <laughs> I can only guess because it's it's hard to interpret. Um, so it's been interesting even watching him in new places, kind of using those words to to reorient himself to where to where we are. Um, uh, we did start with Dusty when we brought him home in January. Uh, he was seven weeks old. Um, in the middle of that awful cold spell. Um, we added a happy and mad button for Dewey because that was the first time he really started expressing emotions. 
and he hit the mad button every morning for a week when he got pounced on by this new little furry thing. Um, but it only took about a week and he, then he, then he declared he was happy. Um, so, uh, so it just took a little bit of, of, of time. Um, Dusty used his first button the very first night he was home. Uh, he hit the love you button and which I thought was so sweet and fell over backwards uh, when it when it made the sound at him. Um, but he has no idea what he's doing. Uh, he will randomly run across the buttons and step on the buttons and sit on the buttons and drop toys on the buttons. Um, but we're looking for other signs of progress with him. Um, so he's been getting more careful about not accidentally stepping on the buttons when he's not excited. Um, I've also tested him a couple of times and I can hit a button and not say the word and he'll respond appropriately. So I can press the outside button and he'll go running for the back door. Um, but he's not, he's not yet ready to use the buttons on his own. So we're, we're all anxiously awaiting the day that Dusty starts starts talking to us and, and waiting to see what he has to say. Um, Lindsay, I think Chris wanted you to tell the story about the kibble in the air vent. Oh. <laughs> so this is another moment where um, I'm, I'm willing to be, I'm very skeptical, right? Uh, there's, you know, there's a high probability um, that a lot of this is, it could be coincidental, right? It's, it's hard to know exactly what, what he's thinking. And if he actually means to say what he means to say, um, as you can see from the video, he very deliberately presses the buttons, um, and, and is very cautious, doesn't tend to walk across the buttons without, without meaning to. So it happens. Um, we have a small house and big dogs. Um, but there have been some real moments where I'm like, this isn't, this isn't an accident. And, um, so this was, they, they have a, a treat ball that you fill with kibble and then it, it has a hole and it dispenses the kibble at random as it rolls around the room. And he, um, notably I called it a dinner ball when I introduced it. Um, he started calling it his puzzle ball which is exactly how it's described on the packaging. So I thought that that was kind of a wild coincidence. Um, so he asked for his puzzle ball and I got it ready and they played with it for 10 minutes until it was, it was out of kibble. There were a couple of times that it got stuck under a piece of furniture and I went over and modeled the help button and retrieved it for them and, um, and, they kept playing. Um, and all the while I'm making my lunch. So I sit down at the table, they're all finished. I'm about to eat my lunch and Dewey says help dinner. And I thought, well, this is, this is a new combination. He's, he, he's, he begs and I give in and we're awful, but usually that means he's going to go over and hit the broccoli button and ask for broccoli if he wants something. So I thought, well, this is, this is odd. And I thought, well, how, okay, maybe this is a novel way of asking for some of my lunch. Um, and I told him no. And I sat down, I started eating and he said, downstairs. I thought, okay, all right. I said, well, we're, we're upstairs. So I walked downstairs and he stood at the top of the steps looking at me like, no, this isn't, this isn't what I meant. So I came back to the soundboard and I said, okay, we're upstairs now. Mama's upstairs. Dewey's upstairs. Dusty's upstairs. And then he said it again. And I thought, okay, this is really strange. And I went downstairs and he didn't follow me. He just looked at me at the top of the steps. Um, so we talked about me going downstairs and then coming back upstairs. And I modeled a couple of different things thinking, did he get these two words confused suddenly? And then he said, upstairs, downstairs. And I thought, okay, this is getting really strange. So while I'm trying to puzzle and figure out what he's talking about, I noticed that Dusty is over at a heating grate in the floor 
and nosing at it. And I thought, I wonder if a piece of kibble fell into the heating vent and lo and behold, I go over and Dewey follows me over and I lift up the heating vent and there were three pieces of kibble that had fallen into the upstairs downstairs. Um, and I retrieved them and he was happy and he stopped pushing buttons until he wanted broccoli later on in the day. Um, so it was really interesting to me that this, this, this took place over the course of about 15 minutes um, that he was persistent. And when I, you know, he asked three different ways for help. Um, and then when I didn't understand what he was trying to say, he modified what he was trying to tell me to get his point across. Um, so that, that was one of those moments where I'm like, I, I don't know how else, I don't know how else to explain what's happening here. Uh, this is such a strange circumstance that we've never been in before. Um, and, and he used all of his words. He didn't go to the floor vent. Um, he used his words to try and explain what he wanted, uh, which was kind of wild. When I talked about, when I said Pennsylvania, Lindsay, when you were there and was it that you were ready to come home or he was wanting to come home, there was something where he was putting, I think some emotions attached to it or feelings, I mean, or just saying home. Yeah, he did say, we never, I was never quite sure if he was asking about home or if this was a new home. Um, uh, but he did hit home. That was one of the first words he hit when we did come home. Um, the other interesting thing about that trip um, was, you know, we packed up the buttons and um, on, our, on our way home in the car, um, we had to make a potty stop uh, like in the middle of a highway because Dusty was a puppy and he needed to go. And we walked through um, a bunch of brambles and he got a couple of sharp burrs in his paw. And I pulled them out and I said, oh, ouch, ouch, um, I'm so sorry. And we got back in the car and then like eight hours later, when we finally got back to Iowa, I pulled the buttons out. He said home and was happy to be home, um, but then also said, ouch. Um, and as if he was trying to tell me about all the things that we had, that we had done that day. Um, there've been a few other times when that's happened. Um, like I've gone for a long bike ride and he was home with my spouse and, um, he'll, he seems to be talking about what they, what they did. Um, he'll say things like poop, poop, walk dinner. Uh, like, yeah, we, um, and I, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to interpret. Um, but, but the one trip that, that, you know, the same silly, ball that that they have um I had come home and I was eating lunch and he said something about dinner dinner ball downstairs and I thought all right those are those are three words that never go together dinner is always upstairs we always play with the dinner ball upstairs where did downstairs come into the into into play and then Jason walked into the house and said Oh yeah, he asked for his dinner ball, and um, I grabbed those treats that were downstairs from the family room, and that's what I filled the ball with. Is that what you normally do? And I was like, nope. But Dewey must have been excited about it because he pointed it out. <laughs> well, Lindsay, this has just been wonderful. I don't have. Um any more comments in the chat room, but I think that we're a small enough group. If someone has a question right now or they'd like to make a comment or anything like that, this would be fine to do. If you just kind of wave at me, we'll uh, try to take turns in this kind of group setting. And uh, just, uh, I know some of you have experience with language learners and, uh, and teaching people things and, so on. So this is a pretty intriguing subject. Does anybody have anything they'd like to add or ask? There's another there chat uh, in here. It says, uh, do you find yourself at his beck and call? Yeah, this is, um, 
been a slight point of consternation between my spouse and I uh, that are, um, I think between being home, uh, we, we, uh, we went online uh, with, at the beginning of the, the pandemic and we're, I was home for about, about a year um, working from home. Um, so that's, that's changed our, our dynamic a little bit. Um, but it is harder to, to ignore, ignore them now. I think, you know, we, we've always had a strong relationship and always spent a lot of time and have been, you know, treated Dewey as more than, than just a pet or just a dog. Um, but, uh, it is a lot harder to say now, like, oh no, we don't have time for a walk tonight. Uh Um, when he goes over and says, well, can we go to the, you know, car field? Uh, and he's like, (laughs) well, yeah. I was just going to take you around the neighborhood for a 10 minute walk, but I guess, I guess, I guess we'll go do this. Cause you ask so nicely. Um, so he does, he, he's, he probably has, has it a, a bit better off than he had before. All right. Um, it says how much do the buttons and the mats cost? So this is, um, this is a, a constant topic of, of, um, of discussion with um uh amongst the the group so they are kind of expensive um the starter kits um are around um 60 or 70 dollars and that gets you two buttons or six buttons and a couple of mats um we we probably have oh goodness uh, we probably have like 600 dollars invested in in buttons at this point. So it is, um, it isn't inexpensive, uh, which means it is, it is, you're, you're seeing an elite group of very privileged folks that are able to, to participate in this at this point. Um, they're working on ways to, to reduce the shipping. It's a small startup company at this point. So they're, they're working on ways to reduce the, the cost. Um, they do occasionally have sales and things like that. So, um, but, but it is, it is a bit of an investment. The, the buttons that you can find on Amazon are sometimes a little bit uh, less expensive. Um, they don't quite work as well. Um, but if you're, if you're just looking to get started, um, there's a, there's a couple of, a couple of different routes. Um, hopefully uh, that'll change in the future. Oh yeah. we want to see the puppies. Um, so they're, they're sleeping at the moment, but oh. I can, I can show you there's, there's Dewey. Oh, um, and then, uh, Dusty, well, Dusty is sleeping under the coffee table. Um, <laughs> he is asleep with his head under the coffee table at the moment. Um, I can find a, a better picture that is representative of the two of them. Uh, And uh, Michelle responded to Trudy saying that this recording will be made available on YouTube in a week or two. So Michelle, uh, what would someone enter? Oh, look at those dogs. So that's the two. Oh, aren't they darling? So anything that's recorded through the Senior Center, um, we have our, our, um, our SCTV person, um, that stands for Senior Center Technology and Video will edit it and uh, make it available on the Senior Center's YouTube channel. Uh, it just takes a little editing because you don't want to see all of the little different faces um, at that one time. We want to see the speaker. So yeah, it'll just be a, a week or two. We usually announce that through our Senior Center email and I can let Barb know too if you're coming from trail. And Trudy, did you have another question? You raised your hand earlier. I, it looked like Trudy was asking about the recording and Michelle okay. responded to that. Yes, yes. Um, this is from Mitzi Reed. How do you distinguish between questions and comments when the buttons are used? Ooh. Is there a way for Dewey to indicate the difference? This, this has been really tough. Um, especially when, um, when we just had a few buttons. Um, it took me a while to start recognizing when he was just talking about what was happening as opposed to asking for something. Um, we've started to introduce buttons like want, and, um, we have a, a question button that just kind of goes, mm, 
um, which is the way bunnies learn to ask questions. So um, I've started to model questions, but that's been a, he, he's only pushed the button once or twice. Um, and usually when it's something unfamiliar, um, he, he kind of surprised me. I introduced a new toy, um, uh, a Kong. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but you stuff yeah. it with, with food. And, um, there's a lot of food related things that we talk about. Uh, he didn't have a button for it. So he's, he, he he hit the question button that when I was holding it one day as if to say like, how do I ask for this thing? Um, and then I gave him a, a button for that. Um, so it's something I'm hoping that as his language progresses that we'll be able to have a clear way to, to indicate. Um, for now, I sometimes just use body language. Um, so sometimes if he's just talking about something happening, um, like if we're making dinner uh, for us, he'll, um, hit the button and then sometimes go over and lay down, um, as if, okay, I'm done. You're making dinner. Um, if it's something that he wants or something that he's asking for clarification for, he has a tendency to stand at his buttons longer. So we're, we're I've been trying to pay attention to those nonverbal cues to understand what context he's, he's using the words. Um, that also becomes really important for new words when he's, maybe not using the word completely appropriately yet. And you're still trying to sort out exactly what he's, what he's trying to say. Um, he's not real good at answering questions yet either. He's, he's done that a few times. Um, we have a yes and no button, um, but not with any sort of frequency or consistency at this point. Um, dogs like Bunny who have been, um, she's about two years in. Uh, she's now starting to use pronouns. Um, like I am we and us, um, and she is a little bit more consistent about clarifying when, when asked, um, and speaking in almost complete sentences at this point, not consistently, but she'll, she'll, we went walk, um, uh, we family. Um, so she, she's, she's good at things like that. Um, She's also started talking about dreaming, we think, recently um, as well, which is just wild. Um, do There's they no hear words when they're lecturing? Yes. <laughs> we, we hear old dogs, new tricks. Have any of the other owners of old dogs reported if the old dogs learn new words? This is something, um, so I think in, in combination uh, with the, with the question of whether they hear their words or not. Um, one of the things that we've always talked about, and as we're coaching new folks into the community with their learners, if you have to spell a word, uh, because your, your learner already recognizes it, it's a pretty good chance that that's a highly motivating word that you want to, that you want to add. Um, so I do have to be careful. Um, uh, one of the, one of the, one of the words we had to be real careful with is Papa. Um, I don't know how we ended up calling each other Mama and Papa. It's it's a little weird, and I but it happened when we brought Dewey home, and that's just that's just how it's been. But if I say um, if I say Papa right now, he's they're okay because it's not the time of day that he usually comes home. But if Jason's about if it's getting close to time for him to be here, and they hear that word, they will run downstairs to greet him. Um, that's how the soon button got introduced because he hit the Papa button and expected him to materialize from work. Um, and, and when that didn't happen, I had to explain to him, it wasn't going to happen right away. Um, there are plenty of older dogs in the study. Dewey's on the older end. Um, I think that made it easier because he already had a pretty robust vocabulary. Um, but there are older dogs, um, some in their you know, 11, 12 years old. Um, there are also a few blind, uh, excuse me, blind and um, deaf animals that, that are learning. Um, uh, the, the, um, the deaf animals, I'm not quite, it's, it's about memorizing the placement on the, on the board. Um, the blind animals, they've been putting different textures on top of the buttons so that the learners can help 
differentiate between the between the buttons. Um, so there doesn't seem to be a correlation to breed or age that they can find in the data so far. Um, as I've mentioned, I found it much easier with an older dog. Dewey picked it up in about two weeks and we've been able to make rapid progress. Whereas Dusty, I think is just, he's, he's just trying to figure out what the world is all about yet. Um, and uh, is just much more, um, he's much more emotive and vocal and busier than Dewey ever was. So I'm wondering where the personality piece will, will come in. That's something else that the, the researchers have been following. Um, like Dewey didn't bark, I think for the first month we had him home as a puppy. He's, he's kind of a quiet, stoic guy. Um, which makes me wonder if he was just more apt to find a different way to communicate. Um, whereas Dusty will sit here and grumble at me when he wants something. Um, he's got a whole, a whole set of vocalizations that mean a whole range of things. Are there any other comments or questions right now? This has just been wonderful. I know many of us are interested and the news lately has been really filled with articles about uh, how we have not just with pets, but all kinds of animals that we have not really understood what was going on with them. One of the big ones was about migration and how wrong we've been about a hundred years of that and things like that uh, as they started tracking animals. So I think there's just, it's a whole new world and it's so exciting to hear your direct experience and see your beautiful dogs. And we are so thankful that you have given us your time today and um, so I think Michelle said we could see this again in a couple of weeks and to follow the senior center there. So with that, I think we'll say goodbye unless people have more they want to tell Lindsay. <laughs>